Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Before we get back to the Fokker D7, let's finish up a project I started 13 years ago. All right, before I introduce you to our newest patient, right there, uh, you're probably all saying, hey bud, what happened to the stomp? Where's the second flight? Uh, about three weeks ago, because it's been that's how long it's been since I've been in the shop. Uh, three weeks ago, everything was done and ready to fly. I uh, brought my usual two planes. Number one, it's Piper Cub. Uh, it's, it's, I like flying that plane a lot, and if the weather looks like it's going to be a perfect day for the Cub, it's almost always in the van. Uh, I had that, uh, and then I had the, my sailplane, it's my Aspire sailplane. Um, just because the it looked like it was going to be light and variable in the morning uh, and then getting windier uh, as the day progressed. So uh, got out there, got everything put together. Uh, of course, the stop was there. There's the wings. Um, got everything put together, uh, went out, uh, threw the glider up and uh, just to do a first test on the air. And the air was a little bit bouncy down below, but you get up top level. Um, and this was like about 930 in the morning. Um, Got up top level and the thermals were popping. Uh, and so I was riding some thermals around. And then even uh, when I was out probably about 800 feet off the flight line, uh, hooked into a good thermal and a big hawk jumped in the same thermal as me and flew up uh, around the around the sailplane. Unfortunately, we had nobody that uh, had a camera. So, uh, so, you know, unfortunately we didn't get a shot of that one. Um, but uh, it started getting choppy. I watched some of the big planes uh, coming in for landings and they were getting buffeted around a little bit. Uh, so I took the Piper Cub up and this was probably at about 10.30, quarter to 11 in the morning. And uh, the takeoff was semi-eventful. Uh, got it up about 100 feet. There was a slight wind shear at 100 feet. So that was probably what was causing uh, the low, lower level turbulence. Um, so I got the Piper Cub up and uh, it was the air was it was different direction But it was smoother up over 100 feet. So I flew it around for about 10 minutes came in for the first landing and The Piper Cub told me it's not a good day to fly to biplane. So uh, it was all over the place and so uh, I boarded the first landing came in for the second one and uh, I got the plane down on the ground Taxied it back, and as I was bringing it back to the flight to the starting stand, um, a dust devil came through, picked up two other people's planes right next to me, flipped them upside down. The good news is no damage was done. It just pretty much just picked them up and flipped them upside down. So somebody shouted out, hey bud, you got four guys trying to hold your canopy. Uh, that little dust devil picked up my 12 foot canopy And it did that to one of the legs. Uh, so they were able to rescue the canopy itself. I had, I had to order one of these, just came in the other day. Um, replacement leg. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was my definitive moment where I said, everything's getting torn down, put back in the van, and time to go home. So don't worry, uh, it will be flown. The second flight will be flown, and I'll at least let the guys that can shoot some photos and uh, do some camera work for me, I'll let them know ahead of time, uh, but I probably just won't announce it to the club. Hopefully it's only gonna be two or three videos, quickies, because all the hard work's done. I've just got to make some adjustments to it, and I'll do I'll do a little walkthrough uh, on this one. It's an old Dynaflight Apogee. It's a, it's an RES rudder elevator spoiler. Uh, it was competition uh, sailplane, 100 inch wingspan. Um, from probably the kit, I don't know exactly the time frame that they made it, but the kit was probably from somewhere. I want to say probably somewhere in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Um, and I built this one when I was recuperating from uh, major back surgery. I've got hardware holding my spine together. So I was pretty much doing rehab for about six months. So for something for me to do, um, I decided to build this because I was able to build something like this in a relatively small area, if you want to look at it that way. 
Um, so this one has literally just been sitting since the spring of 2008. So when I was moving some stuff around uh, down here in the shop, I decided let's go ahead and let's finish this plane. So and I'm going to show you the changes I'm going to make to it. All right, this is, it's just a fuselage in the tail section. Uh, this is a Dynaflight Apogee. Uh, they're really nice competitive planes back in its day. Uh, now that everybody's switched over to carbon fiber, uh, you can still fly it in a class like this, but this is not as competitive as they used to be. So, what I decided to do to this one, as you can see, it doesn't have a nose on it anymore. I did go ahead and I cut the nose off because this, instead of being bungee launched, we're going to go ahead and throw a motor in. Now, with the motors, I do like using Phaser 15.4s. But the phaser is too fat to sit down in here. So what I did is I did a little bit of online research and I know Axie makes some good long motors um, that are designed for sailplanes. And that's exactly what this is. This little motor is capable of 300 watts. Yes, I said 300 watts. Uh, there are guys that uh, put a power it with a three cell pack and you can get that many watts out of this. So that is more than enough for this plane to, for this plane to take off and climb adequately i need about half that so if i had like 150 watts that's plenty because it's a light plane big wingspan uh, if it takes me a minute to get up to altitude i don't care that's fine um, and th having a smaller motor with less than half the weight of the phaser um, it's going to lighten my wing loading uh, substantially so that will be going up front what i'm going to be doing on this and as the videos progress through, uh, I'll just bring in for short little clips. This has to get cut out and it's gotta be rotated probably about two to three degrees of down. Now, if I wanted to, I don't have to do that. I can go ahead and just leave them straight out because what this is doing is just lifting this plane up. So, but I'm still gonna go ahead and do it because I wanna be able to fly the plane, get it up to altitude, and if I wanna transit, uh, say that you, you lose lift and you want to transit to a different spot where you know the thermals might be busting out at. Um, if I have to throttle up to get to it, I'd rather have it so that way I'm not trying to make either a little bit of adjustment or just continually try to fly it without having the plane porpoise up and down. Um, so I'll probably put two degrees of down. Don't have to worry about any, uh, uh, any right thrust. So, so that's what will be going up front. Now, what's going to be, that's going to be attached to, I went over to my friends over at Max Products, because uh, they're local, and uh, got hold of uh, Tom, who's their, uh, one of their sales guys over there, and uh, they had everything in stock, so I just said, hey, I'll be over there in about an hour, went over there and picked it up. So, uh, so what I did is, going with a 40 millimeter, which should fit very nicely on the front of that, and I also got an extra collet. Don't really need an extra collet, but I went ahead and got one because they're cheap. It's like three bucks or something. So I just got another collet. Don't expect to, to lose this one. It's always good to have a spare. And then for the props, instead of going uh, with some regular ATC, because he sells the Falcon line, um, I went with Falcon uh, 9.6 props. So, and that'll be plenty fine to give us the thrust we need to get that up in the air. Now, we're coming into servos. You can see that they've got these things set up for full-size servos. We're not going to full-size servos because we're gonna to have to make a spot for the battery to sit. I'd like the battery to sit right up on top of this tray, but then I gotta figure out how to get the servos back in here, which is where I'd like to put them. So, it'll be interesting. I'm gonna to have to figure out how I wanna work with this. I may make an adapter to sit in here, and if I can get these two servos, I got an HS81, sorry about that. I got an HS81 for the rudder, and I'm going with an HS85 ball bearing. It's got, it's got the carbonite gears in it. This will be much smoother than the 81. And the reason why is because this is a full flying elevator on the back. So, and if you've ever flown something with a full flying, a little bit does a lot, and a little bit more does a whole lot. So, um, yeah, I decided I wanted to go with a with a, a small micro servo uh, that I can trust. I've used them before, never had an issue with them, so that's what we're going with on that. 
All right, now what I decided to do with the receiver is I went with an Optima Light. So it's a six channel, and because it doesn't have the case on it, you're knocking some weight off of it. So every little bit helps. So that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with the, uh, with the light on that one. Now, in the wings, these were put together back in 2008. These are gonna be for the spoiler. And these are just simple, good old fashioned HS55 servos. Uh, these will be very nice with plenty of power to lift the spoilers up. And this is what they're gonna go ahead and operate. These are the spoilers. There's two of them, one for each side. And when I get the wing up on the bench, I'll show you how they sit. And uh, I'm gonna, I got a couple pictures. I'm gonna show you uh, exactly how I'm gonna hook these things up. Cause it's gonna be interesting. Never done it before this way. All right, now with spoilers. I've never done a spoiler before in my long life. Uh, I've done many flaps, never a spoiler. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to put 10 pounds of poop in a five pound box uh, where we're gonna have to put the servo. And that's why I really don't, can't go much bigger than the HS55s because it's a tight fit and you can see I don't have much clearance here. Now, the way I'm gonna try to do this, got two different ways to do it. And uh, please don't be afraid to send me a comment is if you've done this before, if you've tried it either of these two ways, because uh, I still have not made up my mind how I want to do it. So the two different ways to do it is going to be to go ahead and use a little rod. It's pretty bent. This is bent oversized just so that you guys can see it while I'm putting it together. They would come down, fit inside. Let me just do it. Pretty much fit down inside here, inside the servo horn. And this will get glued into place, whether I tacked it, I'd, I'll, I'll make some little wooden blocks just to kind of set it up. Even with some uh, contact cement, I can glue this into position. Now this of course is way too big, but the purpose that this would take, because it's gonna have to, this part of the servo horn is gonna be almost down on the deck. And this rod's gonna be very short. Now what this would do is this would slide into a piece of antenna tube up on the bottom of the spoiler. Now that would just be glued pretty much, hopefully you can see this, glued to the bottom of the spoiler in, in the correct position in height. And then as this piece here, as the servo rotates down, um, it'll go ahead and pull this down so that it's gonna rest up against the stops in the spoiler. That's one. The other way I think will be easier, and I saw it in a YouTube video, how the person did it, and although this is just a this is just a test piece, he used magnets, and the magnet itself was cut and glued into the servo horn, and then that literally just rode on a piece of piano wire. So this is going to give you uh, the amount of force to pull this down so that it's resting properly in this little groove, and then when you pick it up, it can go ahead and slide freely up and down. So this will be the easiest way to do it this will be the most complex way to do it. So right now, inside my little brain, I'm thinking this, but I know I can get a little bit bigger throw with this. That's my conundrum. Um, yeah, because the other option would be to take this servo horn off and get something longer. And I don't think with high tech, they make anything longer than these because it's small and I really don't want to have to put a um, HS81 in so I can use standard size. So it's either going to be to go with this one in the magnet or to use that in a little uh, piece of bent steel, bent wire. Um, yeah, this gives me more options for height on getting this thing as far upright as possible and this would just make it much easier to put everything together and have it work. I'm not looking for perfection here, guys. I just want it to work. I'm thinking if I can come up to, I don't have to come up to 90 degrees. If I can come up to hopefully 45 degrees, and you guys have done this before, let me know. If I come up to 45 degrees, will that spoiler act accordingly to go ahead and collapse the lift over this part of the wing right here? So that way uh, the plane will pretty much gonna let you know it's gonna land and it's gonna land fast so um yeah so you guys 
let me know. So as you can tell, I spent almost a week just trying to figure out how I want to do just that. Um, searching online for probably hours, just trying to figure out the two best ways I think that it can be done uh, to get the, the amount of angle to decrease the amount of lift I'm looking for. Um, I mean, I've flown gliders for years. I mean, I'm probably going on, definitely been more than a decade I've been flying gliders. Um, so I would not have an issue landing this plane without a spoiler. So as of right now, I will be using the spoiler. So before I go, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys next time down in the shop.